Alrighty, welcome back. Uh, region bounded by f of x equals x squared, g of x equals root x about uh, the y-axis. So here, quick sketch time, x squared looks like this. Friendly neighborhood parabola, root x looks like this. Now there's this little spindle shape that we're looking at, and we're spinning it about the y-axis. So it's going to go like this, and it's going to end up like somewhere here. So quadrant 1 and 2 need to be looked at in more detail. So we have that, make this wider. I know that x squared will look like this, and root x will look like this. And just thinking about this, if x squared is equal to root x, uh, plugging in numbers actually works here faster than solving it. You can, you can square both sides and get x to the fourth equals x, x to the fourth minus x equals zero. Factor out an x and you get x cubed minus one equals zero. So either x is equal to 0 or x cubed equals 1, which means x is equal to 1. So you can figure out the, the points of intersection of those two curves by doing it algebraically. Uh, I think it, it's more intuitive to just look at the equations themselves and see where would they most likely intersect. So in this case, they both run through the origin. So 0 comma 0 is, a, is certainly a point of intersection. And we're looking for an x value where if we take the square root of it, we get the same answer as if we had squared it. One serves that quite nicely. So I know that this point will be, oops, come back. I know that this will be one and the y value is one. I have to spin this around the other side. So this is my region. I need to label my functions. y equals x squared. This one is y equals root x. And then if I were to reflect it about the y-axis, it's going to look like so, and like so. So now that I have my reflection, I should be able to draw my trace path. So this point is not going to go anywhere. But if I take this point and I spin it, oops, I keep erasing. If I spin it around the y-axis, it's going to go there, hit that point, and then come back. And again, we're spinning it in that direction. This point is going to go here and then come back. This point at the same time, so it's the same y value, same height, it's going to go a farther distance, hit the other side, and then come back. Now, the purpose of choosing that specific y value, I mean, it, it's not any y value. You could have picked three quarters if you wanted to or one fourth if you wanted to. The purpose of picking that is to say, if I were to slice this horizontally, which I would need to because I'm spinning it about the y-axis. I always, uh, whenever I'm using the disc or the washer method, my cuts have to be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So I have to make the slice or the cut horizontally to have a constant cross section. If I were to do that, I would be missing this region. This, this is empty space. This is the region that was being spun. So when I spin this about here, it's going to come out of the wall on this side. And as I explained in the other video, think about uh, an ice cream cone. So think of a shape that looks like this. And now imagine injecting Botox into the ice cream cone or injecting, filling it up with water into the wall. So in here and here. And imagine that the walls now start swelling up, almost like a, a rice shape. The cone is empty on the inside, but it does have walls that have, you know, now been injected with Botox, for instance. Now, when we slice this horizontally, I want to make sure I labeled everything. So this is negative one. Uh, when we slice this horizontally, I'm going to get two radii here. One radius is going to be of the inner shape and the other radius is going to be of the outer shape. So this distance from here to here is going to be some x value. The distance from here to here will be another x value. So let's call this x1, let's call this x2. The radius, uh, so we have a larger circle where the radius is x2, and the, there's a smaller circle on the inside where the radius is x1. Because we sliced horizontally, the radius will be some horizontal value. So this will be r equals x sub 1. That's the inner radius, that's the distance from here to here. 
and then x sub 2 is the radius from that point the on the y-axis to that point. Now there's two ways to think about this. You can do this with disk method or you can do this with washer method. So what I want you to think about is ignore this inner function entirely for a moment. So just think about the graph of y equals x squared. Now imagine you had spun y equals x squared. Wouldn't we get a solid bowl that you know looked like this at the top and then had this as the wall and this as the other wall? So imagine again that this curve is not here. You have just the perfect solid uh, bowl that's uh, almost like Imagine taking a solid sphere and cutting it in half. So then you have the bottom part of the sphere. That's what the shape would be. Now imagine taking a chisel or a drill or some sort of carpentry tool and you carve out the inner, uh, the, the center portion of it. So you carve out this region. And then all you're left with is the side of the bowl and then some sort of wall with some thickness here and then some sort of wall and some thickness there. So there's two ways to think about it. One is to say, we're gonna use the disk method to find the volume of the entire outside shape, of the larger shape, which is going to be generated by x squared. Now, momentarily, let's forget about this part of the graph, and let's say we concentrate on just this empty voided space. We should be able to find the volume of that region as well by just spinning this curve about the line x equals zero, or the y-axis. So if we spin that around the y-axis, we'd get a region that has this up top, and then this has one wall and this is the other wall. Now what happens if I, imagine like a, a wooden puzzle almost. Imagine taking that triangular shape that's highlighted right now and sort of lifting it out of the bowl, and if you put it back, then it's the solid bowl. If you take it out, then it's the empty bowl and you can put ice cream inside or well, cereal or something else. So what we're doing there is disk minus disk. We're finding the larger volume and subtracting from it the smaller volume. That's using the disk method. A slightly different version of that is something called the washer method. It's literally the same thing as disk minus disk, but we just write it slightly differently. Now I'm gonna show it mechanically as to the, 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 the two things are the same. Had we found the volume of the outside shape, that would have been the integral from uh, zero all the way to one of pi times the larger radius squared with respect to y. And we would have integrated from zero to one of pi times x2, x sub two squared with respect to y. Now x sub two, is not something we can integrate with respect to y because the letters don't match. However, this distance from here to here is given by some x value. And for that distance, I can find a y value according to this function. So if I wanted to find what the x value was for that particular y value, I could just solve this equation for x. And if we had done that, this would imply that x would be the square root of y. And if we had done the same thing for the other equation, which we'll get to in a moment, we would have gotten x equals y squared. So what we can do is for this x sub two, what we can do is we can replace that x with the square root of y and get integral from zero to one of pi times uh, what was it, square root of y, squared with respect to y. And this is a function we can integrate with respect to y. On the other hand, if we wanted to find the volume of the inner shape, so that's this shape that I'm talking about, we can do pi, uh, the integral, oops, integral from zero to one of pi times the little radius squared with respect to y, the little radius would be the distance from here to here, or the distance from here to here. And if I know what the y value is at this point, I can figure out the x value by solving the equation for x. 
So this would be the same as the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times x sub 1 squared with respect to y. And then x sub 1 is the same as y squared with respect to y. Both these functions can, both these integrals can be found, and the volume of the walls, or the volume of the region that we really need, is the volume of the outside minus the volume of the inside, which will be the integral from 0 to 1 pi times, I'm going to write it slightly differently, you'll see why in a moment, minus the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times y squared squared with respect to 